Uh, I've now got a um, tonight's knowledge report. And it's about this guy called Lucky Lance here in Australia. And he's basically some sort of thug guy that goes after activists, people who are anti-vaccine and who are trying to fight the tyranny of the Australian government. And the excuse he uses is that he's going after people who are raising money and that they're a scam and that they're that's his justification. So he calls himself an anti-scammer activist, right? So he's okay with the lockdowns. He's okay with the forced vaccine and stuff. He's not protesting against those things. He's protesting against people who are raising money unfairly, right? That's the cover he uses. But he can tell he doesn't care about people getting ripped off or whatever. And these movements aren't really ripping people off. But you can have some arguments saying that maybe they shouldn't, you know, raise money because... Um, you know, they're not going to win their court cases or something like that, right? But this guy's unfairly going after them. And it's like, I, I, there are people in the freedom movement who I disagree with certain things about them, but I don't stalk them. I don't try and send the cops after them. I don't team up with the government like this Lucky Lance guy. Um, so to me, you know, I, I hadn't heard of this guy before. And then I looked into him and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, and I looked further and further and talked to people and all this sort of stuff and connected all these dots. And I'm like, man, this guy reeks of a government agent. I mean, this guy is working for the deep state. This, like, this guy is totally a government agent. And he's there to stuff up the freedom movement because the government doesn't want the freedom movement. The government wants people taking their vaccine. They want people locking down and going along with it. So what they do is they send the intelligence agency to do secret ops to try and stop that movement because it's for national security. It's for national security that, that we all have to get vaccinated for the whole the COVID thing, right? And this Lucky Lance guy has done stuff interstate and he's also done some stuff involving um, the election. He took down a sign for UAP, right? And so to me, his activities indicate his ASIO right? It's an, it's an Australia-wide thing. He's not just working for the local cops. Um, and so he goes after these activists, right? And then he never gets into trouble for stalking them and stuff like that. Like, the, he gets thrown out of court. Why? Because the system's protecting him. The, the ASIO, the security agency at the top, who has judges in their back pocket and lawyers and police and everything, they have all these different government organizations infiltrated, and they have cells operating all these government organizations. They protect him and are looking after him. And so, and then you look into this Lance guy, and he's got a, uh, a case where he murdered someone, and it got found that it was self-defense. And But then when you read the coroner's report, it just reeks of a, of a murder. Like, it does not <laughs> seem to be self-defense at all. Like, he rocks up at the house with a knife, and, and uh, he's asking for money, and it's just... It's outrageous, and I'm going to put the link in for the um, coroner's report about this guy. Uh, in this, I'm going to make a video, a short video of this. Um, I'm going to put the link in the comment section. I'm going to put a link as well for a uh, Daily Mail article about him. But the reason why it's important to establish that that he is a murderer and a criminal is because what the government do is they recruit criminals to do their operations. Um, like I was saying earlier, how with the how the government's shipping in the drugs, they recruit mafia type people and organised crime type individuals, and what they say is that you can come work for us and we will let you out of jail, basically, and we'll protect you as long as you work for us. So with Lance, I think that this guy um, was totally guilty of what he did. Um, but they offered him a deal and they said, you know, you, you won't go for, to jail for 20 years uh, if you play ball with us and work for us and they probably pay him well. And so that's what they do. And that's why you'll find that when you look into the, the CIA, they've got this nickname because the CIA is just America's version of ASIO, right? So they, they do similar stuff and they've got probably he, each other infiltrated. But CIA has a bit of a nickname called, called Crooks in Action and cocaine importation agency, right? And communist intelligence agency, because they're pushing commun cobby shit, like forcing the vaccine on us. They've got the cocaine they're importing, and they're crooks in action because many of them who work uh, for the CIA and ASIO and stuff, many of them are criminals themselves, 
Um, like for example, they'll find somebody who was uh, really good at hacking computers and he's about to go to jail for hacking computers. And then they say to him, hey, look, we'll make it so you don't go to jail and you can come work for us because we want your skill to hack, com hack computers. Uh, possibly the same with the drug trade and other things. And so I think Lance, they let him free uh, and they offered him a deal to come work for him and, and, and do these operations. Um, and it is a conspiracy of mine, and uh, I'm not 100. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I know that I know how intelligence operations run, and I know what the characteristics are. And this guy absolutely reeks of being a deep deep state operative and being an agent for the government. Absolutely reeks. His wife also, which is very interesting. His wife's a lawyer. And uh, his wife uh, was involved with um, organized crime people who were importing drugs. So like, the, you know, those top mafia type guys, right? And so when we know that the deep state uh, is involved with the drug trade and protects it and is making money off it, the intelligence ag agencies make money off the uh, drug trade. That's the, the big secret. That's why we have drugs everywhere, yet there's a war on drugs. It's because the government <laughs> has sanctioned it secretly that, and said it's okay. This guy's wife is a lawyer that's defending those guys, right? So that to me indicates that his wife is an operative of the deep state as well. And... Um, It's just, she's in bed with the government. So she'll make, she'll advertise herself as being a lawyer that defends criminals, right? But if I had a case and I was going to go to her, I wouldn't trust anything, any advice she gives me or anything. She might totally be in bed with the judge and uh, in bed with the government and she might not do a good job at all. Like she, she's doing other stuff. I would not trust her at all. Um, and so I'm just, see how you piece all these things together? And I know some people might not believe me that the government's involved with the drug trade, but when you look into it deeper and further, you find out that there are judges and stuff that, it, um, that, that use drugs themselves and stuff. And it's a, drugs are a fantastic way for them to fund their black operations, like I said earlier. Um, and the drug industry is just a, is, it's a government monopoly on drugs and they, and they make good money on it and they take out their competition, but they, they don't have a problem with drugs. But, but anyway, it's just, it's so interesting connecting all these dots and seeing how she was like, she was a gangland lawyer basically and stuff. And you're like, whoa, these, these mafia type guys are just front men for the deep state. So when their operations do stuff up and the cops the good cops, because they're good cops who are trying to fight this, right, in the system. They're, they're trying to fight the drug trade, and they're like, what the hell's going on? And then sometimes they do manage to lock up a guy and expose him, but they never expose that it's the government agencies that are behind it. They never expose that it was an intelligence agent. It just, yet, it just gets exposed as being a mafia guy, you know, or a bad boy criminal drug guy, right? And that bad boy criminal drug, drug guy like Mick Gatto or... Tony Mockbell or Carl Williams or whatever, or Rick Ross or whatever in Los Angeles, they might not even know that actually the government are the ones that were helping them and stuff. They might just think that they're really good at what they do and that they, they you know, paid off a judge once and they're like, yeah, that cool judge look, looked after me or whatever and protected me. But it, it, they don't get how deep it goes, right? Because all these black ops and covert operations, they're compartmentalized. You only know when you're involved with them, you only know what you are allowed to know, right? So this Lance guy, I'm just telling you, he absolutely reeks. And I, and I wouldn't go near his wife, unless if I was, if I was like a major drug importer, right? And, um, and I knew that certain people in the government were assisting me and I noticed it, only then would I go to Zara for advice? Because I would assume that she's on the same side as me and she's working with the deep state to help protect me. That would be the only time I'll go to that lawyer for advice. But if I was just, if I was an anti-vaxxer or 
just anyone else, I would not go near her for advice because she's totally tainted. Tainted, and when you when you look at videos of her as well, she looks like she's guilty. She's the way she holds herself. Self, it looks like she's got um, stuff in her closet, if you know what I mean. Um, so anyway, I've got I've got some stuff here that Lance says. I'm, I'm going to play it now, and you have to understand how the deep state works. So they when they're doing one of these operations, they don't wear a t-shirt and say, okay, let's go stalk an anti-vaxxer. And it says, I'm with ASIO or, or, or I'm with the CIA. And then they go and stalk the anti-vaxxer. They don't, they don't do that. They use middlemen. And this Lance guy appears to be a middleman. And so then, you know, um, then it doesn't get traced back to them. Do you see what I mean? And, and you never really know where the source of the attacks are coming from, but it's coming from the intelligence agencies. Do you see what I mean? That's where the real source is. And actually, if you look around you, the forced vaccines, the lockdowns, the transgenderisms, the, um, the drugs, the climate change crap, they're actually the fruits of these intelligence agencies. It's, it's the secret group outside of government at the top that are pushing all these things and are corrupting our society and corrupting our justice system and forcing all this leftist crap onto us. And they're the real source. And really a documentary, I'm probably going to make it one day, needs to be made on this group to expose this group so that people really know that that's the actual source. So when the activist has all these trolls abuse the hell out of them and all these trolls um, get their GoFundMe shut down and get their bank account frozen, right? They contact the Commonwealth Bank or whatever and get their bank account frozen. That's these activists, but they're not really activists. They're actually deep state operatives. And anyway, this guy, Lance, he's the front guy, right? So a lot of the activity that he achieves, it's not even just him, it's his team. Other people are doing it, but it gets blamed on him. But it was really deep state operatives that were making it happen. Anyway, so Lance did this interview where he opened up his gob and just was a bit too honest and stuff because maybe he doesn't even understand how the full operation works because him, him himself is a patsy. Like he's, he's getting, you know, used for things because he's stalking these anti-vaxxers and they're going, damn Lance, damn Lance has done this, damn Lance has done that, right? But they don't understand that he's a government operative and they need to know that. They need to know where the source really is coming from. People don't understand how incredibly outrageous our government is, right? And, and also, on top of this, if you really work to expose the truth and challenge a system, right, you'll get, you'll get, um, you, it's possible, you know, if you're really successful, that you'll get shot and killed. You're not going to get shot and killed by a guy that's rocked up in a t-shirt saying, I'm ASIO or, or I'm CIA, and he rocks up and shoots you. That's not how it is. They'll get a middleman, so they'll hire one of their organized crime people, one of these mafia people, one of these Lance type people. You'll just have some thug shoot you. And then, when it's in the paper or whatever in the news, no one will ever know where the source come from. It's like how Kennedy got shot. That was all a CIA operation, right? How they shot President Kennedy. If you look into it, all you see is, well, sorry, you see, you see lots of mafia stuff, like organized crime things and mafia stuff. They're the front guys. They're the guys who shoot the president, right? But the, but the real source is that it was coming from the CIA. So they use this middleman way of protecting themselves constantly when they commit crimes so that they get away with it. It's an intelligence operation. It's a clever way of doing things so they never get in trouble for things. There's never a royal commission into the intelligence agency. There's never a scandal with the intelligence agency, which, which is what they should be. You know, even with this Lawyer X scandal in Melbourne, it's a scandal of the Victoria Police. It's not a scandal of the agency that's actually behind it at the top who sent in Nicola Gobbo. Do you see what I mean? You, can, you can't trust anything Nicola Gobbo says. And then when you read a book about Lawyer X, that's been sanctioned by the government and, and that, that's the official record and stuff. And that's not the true story of it. And it'd be full of lies and twistings and stuff. Anyway... So I'm going to play some stuff of Lance talking now, and it's, he's saying how, here how his activism operation works. So ch check this out, because wherever you are in the world, the deep state will do things like this to your freedom movement. So you need to know this. And how do you keep positive? Oh, that's, a, no, that's a good question. Well, for me, first of all, I've got nothing. I can't complain. You know, I bring this on myself. So all the hate, um, 
um, and, and threats and abuse and defamation. They go after my wife, the freedom movement, give my wife bad Google reviews. They ring her in the middle of the night, threatening her. I've got rebel news. I've got a sustained attack on my wife for, for over a year now. It's, it's, you know, ended up in the federal court. And they go after my wife. My wife cops a lot and I cop a lot. But I don't, I can't complain. I have no right to complain because um, it's cause and effect and I've caused it, you know. So I'm, uh, as I do my anti scamming activism. But I do it in a way like there's no holes barred. I'm ruthless. Uh, I'm unfair. I go over the top. You know what I mean? I, I, I mock these people um, with, you know, with bad language, bad humour. It's absolutely relentless and ruthless and cruel. I'm cruel to these people in the freedom movement, the people that uh, make money from the freedom movement. I'm so cruel to them. I fuck their lives up. You know, I get their GoFundMe's taken down. Uh, I've built a little team of anti-scamming activists. We've got registered informants. We've got people making reports to all different government agencies all the time. It's really, it's grown uh, into this little network of anti-scamming activists. And um, but uh, the online stuff with the videos, I just make these crazy, stupid videos, but they're so harsh. They're so fucking harsh. Uh, some people are bloody depressed after some of these scammers, you know, like they're, mm. they're you know, they're in tears. They're going to the police, they the police here all the time. They're at the police station um, whinging about me, you know. So, um, it's relentless, ruthless anti-scam. What I do, it's ruthless and relentless and it's cruel and, um, and, I'm, and I'm proud of it. But when you participate in that sort of behaviour, obviously you're going to get a lot of fucking backlash, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Obviously you're going to get a lot of backlash and threats and abuse and, all, and like I said, and the attacks on my wife. So, you know, it's cause and effect. I've caused it. It's, you know, that's, I haven't chosen to be an anti-scamming activist and just make these nice polite videos and say this is wrong for these reasons. I've... I make these videos. I go, he's a scam and fucking rat. I'm, I'm re- relentless. I don't know if you've seen my videos. They're, they're, I have toned them down a bit the last six months because I got a lot of nerds following me now. I've been on it, made a lot of new friends on Twitter. I've been, <laughs> I got a few nerds, so I have toned down the language and the rhetoric just a little bit. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's ruthless, you know. And, and someone gets a GoFundMe taken down, they start another one. We get that taken down. It, it's, it's and this has been going seven days a week for two years, you know. Um, it's really, really, really ruthless and relentless. And uh, I've done a lot of damage to the freedom movement, you know, and I really fuck with them, you know, like I fuck with the heads, you know, like I, I sit here with my crystal ball when I know there's an article coming out in the paper about them. I'll do I'll, I'll do a psychic reading here, I'll do a video and say, <laughs> oh, I reckon you guys should read The Age tomorrow, page two, you know? <laughs> and then the next day, sure enough, it'll come out another another uh, uh, another spread on someone in the freedom movement. So they know I'm behind it, you know what I mean? So I just there, just mocking them mocking them, mocking them. And then to the point where we're even helping the police, uh, assisting the police, uh, like for, in regards to like Nick Patterson, people like that, we find out when they're already in trouble with the police, then we we find out who the informants are. We send them more evidence and more information to help really nail the nails in the coffin. So it's like I said, it's ruthless, relentless, anti, you know, we're, we're really attacking these people from all angles, including the videos where I'm just fucking, I'm just cruel, you know? And so... For that reason, I have no right to complain <laughs> that I'm getting death threats every day and, and people doing it, you know what I mean? So it's co- I've caused it, you know? I'm mm-hmm. so I, I've got no right to complain. That's that's where. And so when I get the inboxes, yeah, I sometimes they say about my kids and wife, I might, I'll be, I'd like to say, I'd like to lie to you and say it doesn't hurt. <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. you yeah, know, it does hurt. With it. It's always about the wife. They always go, you can't really hurt me. I've got nothing to lose. You know, I've got no career. You know what I mean? I've got a sorted past myself. I've haven't got some polished image to to maintain. Mm. You can't really insult me. You know what I mean? And I embarrass myself online more than people can embarrass me anyway. So they always go after my wife. You know, my wife. Uh, you know, she's an incredible person, incredibly successful, probably the most successful female lawyer in Australia. Uh, she's got the most successful criminal law firm uh, in Victoria, at least, and possibly Australia. And um, you know. And she's very successful and high profile. And uh, so they attack her. You know what mm. I mean? So how do you how do you get to Lance? Well, you can't hurt him. He doesn't give a fuck. He's just a nobody. Mm. Oh, but he's got this prestigious wife. Ah, we'll attack her. And that's what they do. You'll see Rebel News about a relentless campaign against my wife. They've posted photos and videos of her. She's never, she doesn't even fucking use Facebook. She thinks we're all idiots <laughs> on the <laughs> internet. You know what I mean? She's not even engaged. Mm. Uh, but he attacks her. And like many other people in the freedom movement, attack my wife to get to me. And um, and in the inboxes, it's always derogatory comments about my wife. And 
All right, so that's very interesting, right? Now, because um, what people don't get is that how these intelligence agencies operate is that it's secret warfare, okay? We've got the soldiers, we've got the normal part of the of the war, which are the soldiers and stuff like that. That's open and honest. They're wearing uniforms. It's not hidden and all this stuff. But then, and then you've got the police and they're going out there and they're wearing uniforms and they're getting people. But there's secret police and there's secret soldiers. You know, it's secret warfare. That's a whole different tactic. And that's what the agencies are involved with. It's secret ways, okay? So it's secret ways of going after the activism movement. It's secret ways of waging war on a country. So if you send the ASIO or the CIA into a country, right, they don't walk around with t-shirts on and guns and shit. They do a secret operation and they infiltrate things and they, they stir up a revolution and it's all done through another group. So you hear like, um, with the Contras or whatever in uh, Central America, right? But that Contra group is actually secretly CIA, but you don't know that. And so it's just, it's the way they wage warfare. It's, it's a certain way of tact. Like, let's say, like, who, who's watching this right now? Let's say I hate you, right? And I want to come after and attack you. I can walk to your house, walk up to you and punch you in the face, right? Or I can do secret covert way of attacking you and I can watch you and I can secret, secretly spike your drink with a bit of poison or I can sometimes pinch letters out of your letterbox and I'm, I'm waging a secret warfare on you, right? So whenever anyone wants to, or when anyone or a government wants to come after someone, they've got two ways, overt or covert, right? Overt is like obvious and clear and known. There's two ways of going about it right? And a lot of the time, there's all this covert, well, actually all the time, there's all this covert secret stuff going on, secret warfare, secret attacks, but we don't know how to spot it because it's secret and it's, and it's shifty and it's done through covers and stuff. So this guy, Lance, I bet you, is part of a secret attack on the activist movement and he's there to foment trouble and stir up hate and make infighting and all this stuff and to, and to get people's GoFundMe's cancelled so that they can't continue their activism and they give up. Anyway, here's another video of saying what, how he goes to protests and films protesters and sends it to the cops. This is outrageous. Check it out. Groups like that, it's not just them. I'm not just speaking on them, there's other groups. You just convincing people how miserable and how shit and how corrupt and horrible it is in Australia. And people feel shit. I see people at the protests, you know, I watch the protests because we watch them because we're giving live info to police on the uh, on, on certain protesters and whatnot. And I watch the protesters and you see some of the people crying and sad and, and uh, up in arms about living here and how corrupt it is because of the mandates and this and that. They're really miserable and pessimistic about living here. I'm like, that's just fucking stupid. So to the groups that that make money from this and push this narrative, I say, fuck them. I say they're evil. I say they're evil. You know, and it's an insult to people that live in these third world countries. So I had an idea. So um, because they don't teach intelligence activities at school, people can get tricked by them. But I hope now that you've listened to this, you can understand how shifty the government is. It's shifty. It's shifty like you wouldn't believe. Like I recently heard about how when someone wants to give a bribe to a politician, right, it's, it's hard to do that. But one way they can do it, in a, a real clever way they can do it, is they make a statement that's bagging that politician. And they have a deal set up with that politician that that politician is now going to sue them, right, for defamation. And so they sue them for defamation and they win and they get a payout and that's the bribe. And so it appears as if it's a, a court case where that person is just suing that person because they did defamation. But you don't really know that that person actually wants that person to sue that person. They've actually got a secret deal that they've negotiated outside of court and before the court, all that sort of stuff happened. And, um, and then... That, 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 that was all a secret way of making payment. That's how shifty the system is. You get what I mean? It's like, because the, the politician doesn't want anyone knowing that 
this this company or industry bribe them or something. So a way to do it is to do this shifty thing where you arrange, okay, you're going to sue me, blah, blah, blah. It's all fake. Do you see? This is how epically shifty the world is. Anyway, you just can't take things at face value. You got to, That's why when you see a news report of someone suing someone else, you just like, you don't know if that's all a setup. And the judge might not even be in on it, you know? It's just, it's outrageous. Um, so anyway, I hope you understand how shifty the government is and the things that they're willing to do in order to go after the freedom movement. Uh, and they're doing it for national security. And and this Lance guy, um, he is absolutely outrageous. And what he needs to understand is that, um, you know, how would you feel if your kid got autism from a vaccine? You know, how would you feel? You know, it's just, it's totally wrong what you're doing and stuff. You know, I mean, imagine if you had your business shut down during the lockdowns and lost thousands of dollars. You know, how would you feel? You know, and you're going after the freedom movement like it's it's a real dog act to, act to do, and I assume that you've got some crime that um, they're hanging over your shoulder to control you with, um, or and that they're paying paying you well, but you're playing a dangerous game because they'll they'll burn you, they'll throw you under the bus, and once your use is over. Uh, it's it's possible that yeah that they'll, they'll, they'll screw you over like you can't trust them like if they're going to do a, a false flag attack or something they could look at a list of people and go okay for this let's say they're going to do a fake shooting or something like that they'll go they'll look through their list and they'll go oh well, Lance could could probably do this well because he's one of our operatives and they'll um they'll set you up and they'll blame you for something and then they'll lock you up and they'll go well who was a criminal anyway. You know what I mean? He was supposed to be locked up anyway, and uh, we needed to do this false flag, and he's dispendable. They'll, they'll just get rid of you, and then they'll replace you with some new version of Lucky Lance, some new guy that have let free from jail. Um, so you can't trust them, is what I'm trying to say. And like, for example, with the Kennedy shooting in 1963, there was a, a government agent uh, was uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, and he was a good government agent. He was doing what he was told to do and he was pretending to be a communist and handing out flyers and stuff like that. Well, they totally backstabbed him and used him as a patsy. And you can see the footage of him looking at the camera going, I'm just a patsy because he's shocked. He's like, oh my God, I got totally set up and now I'm being blamed for killing the president. Like he realizes that at that moment, he's never going to get, never going to get let out of jail and he's going to get killed. And he's like, oh my God, how dare the government do this? They backstab him. Right? So, they're, they're traitors. You can't trust them. So Lance, you're in a dangerous situation because you've got a wife and kids and stuff, and you can't trust these guys. So if I was you, I would I would really recommend, you know, getting all your wealth out slowly, secretly, somehow getting all your wealth out and everything, and running to a country where there's no extra extradition treaty, and just doing a complete runner, just a complete runner, a clean just out of there, and just go and start a whole new life and get a, a a reasonable job. Anyway, um, so that's all I want to say on that topic.